Hi everyone, this is what we're doing today. In some problems we are interested in finding a lower or an upper bound for the expectation of a random variable rather than finding an exact numerical value for it or an expression for it. And this is one instance where we can apply Jensen's inequality. To get you thinking about expectations, consider this expected value of constant a plus constant b times a random variable x, then you know that this holds. Look back at video problem 19 for examples on applying this. Now let me ask you a question. For random variable x that takes only positive values, is this statement true or false? The expected value of 1 over x is equal to 1 over the mean of x, like 1 over mu say. Is that true or false? It might look to be true, but in general actually it's false. And we can prove it, we can prove it using Jensen's inequality. So here he is, looks like a guy who takes care of himself. Jensen applies to particular types of function. If the function is calling phi here, if the function is convex, I'll explain what that means later, is it convex, then this holds. Right, what does this say? This says that the mean of the convex transformation of the random variable is at least as big as the convex transformation on the mean of the random variable. Another way of seeing it is like this guy here is a uh, lower bound for this expectation or this guy here is an upper bound for this depending on what you're interested in. Let's now answer the two questions. Let x be a positive random variable and argue without violence this and this. Right, So this guy here I've just shown you that it wasn't equal and I said it's at least as big as. Okay. 1 over x is a transformation. I just plotted it and I plot it over the positive values of x because that's what the question was about then you can the function is convex why a definition if you pick any two points and the entire line lies on or above the graph then that um, function is convex and it's strictly convex if the entire line ignoring the endpoints lies above the graph so pick any two lines, you can just verify yourself that what we have here, 1 over x is convex and strictly convex, so it's strictly convex. Phi is the reciprocal function, it just takes x and does 1 over it, or takes the argument and does 1 over it. Let's compute the left and right hand side of this Jensen's because we know it can apply now because we've got convex function, phi being convex. So phi takes argument here mean of x, mu, so let's say, so what will it do? Do 1 over mu. Now do the right hand side. Let's look at the inside here first. This time the argument for phi is not mu, it's x. So this just says do 1 over it, so it's 1 over x. So it's the mean of 1 over x. There you go. And then just state Jensen's. Now at the bottom part of the theorem where it says if phi is strictly convex, which is so in our case, then the quality is strict unless x is a constant random variable. So I've just allowed it so that x may be constant random variable. Okay, So just stated that. Now the second example here that the expected value of x squared is at least as big as mu squared. In other words, the second moment is at least as big as the first moment. Very useful result. Okay, so there you go. Let's plot. You can verify by the same argument that this thing x squared is strictly convex phi is a squared function, compute the left and right hand side of inequality and just then just state this using Jensen's. So in t in using it as bounds, like the first one is like suppose we want to work out, we, we're not interested in the exact value for this, this says this expected value of 1 over x is at least as big as 1 over mu and I might know what the value of mu is then I could say that this is at least as big as a certain number. Depending on which of the terms I know in the second one I can say I can say different things. Suppose I know what mu is here then I can say that the second moment is at least as big as this mu squared. Say I don't know this but I do know this moreover often it's, imp it's uh, interesting to know whether this guy is finite or not. If it is finite then it follows that mu must be finite. Continuing on with the second example, 
I want to think about now if you had to memorize this, if you didn't have to prove it, you had to memorize so you can just apply it, how would you know to get this the right way around? And a function of the mean must be less than or equal to the mean of a function if the function is convex. Well, let's look back at the second example that can help you because you use some facts that you already, guys already should know. The variance of x over a random variable is this. Also, you know that the variance of x is bigger than or equal to zero, being strictly bigger than zero if it's a proper random variable. Well, combining the two here, this difference here must be bigger than or equal to zero, so then you've got that. In other words, the mean of a function of the random variable, here being the squared function, is at least as big as the function of the mean. Okay, so that means you've got this inequality the right way around. Now, Jensen's inequality applies also for convex functions. So here we've got two and one here. We're just using the idea of symmetry. So a function is concave if you take if the negative of that function is convex. In other words, guys, if you if you join up any two points on the graph and the entire line lies below the graph, then it is concave. For example, a log function is concave. In such a case, all, what you do with this inequality is swap it around. So then this guy is bigger than or equal to this. It's all very well if we can just sketch function or we just can see that it's concave or convex but how about for more complicated functions we can do a test for concavity or convexity for functions if they have second derivatives and uh, here we've got a function in one variable so a function in one variable with continuous sec with second with second derivatives then this function is convex if the second derivative of it is at least as big as zero for all x and concave if it's less than or equal to 0 for all x. We can replace this by strictly and strictly if we go strictly bigger than or strictly less than. Going back to the second example, just applying it to here, for x bigger than 0, the random variable x bigger than 0, the function here t is, takes the general form x to the power of a, where in the example we used a as 2. But let's just say for any a we know that this function is continuous on R. Right, to calculate the second derivative, this is what, what we get. In purple here, this is what I've sketched. And you can see that for the interval 0 to 1 inclusive, it's less than or equal to 0, and outside the interval it's bigger than or equal to 0. In other words, then, we can say that the function x to the power of a is concave for a between 0 to 1 inclusive of the boundaries and convex if it's outside that interval uh, but including the endpoints. Okay so now discussion time. Some of you might be wondering then okay convey convex concave functions so um, where where do we see them in statistics you know how how applicable is this Jensen's equality? Alright I put in brackets here in statistics because this applies in any math application Okay, so, but I'm talking about statistics. So in statistics, you're going to meet like uh, loss functions. You you want to like s sometimes you want to you have problems where you want to minimize some loss function. For example, in regression, you have this least squares for linear regression that is convex. E to the power of x on the real line that is convex, and you see that prevalent uh, all over statistics, like in density functions. Power of x just discussed, concave or convex, depending on the power. Log of a random variable where that random variable bigger zero is concave. For example, we can take log of uh, some density. So in all such cases, we can, and we're looking for inequalities involving expectations, we can think about Jensen's. Finding bounds is not the only thing though. So we've got to list it, let's see. Bounds on expectations. For example, information theory, that's an application of it. Deriving inequalities where you don't see the expectation symbol. For example, looking at the relationship between the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean relationship. You can use Jensen here to show that this guy is bigger than or equal to this guy. I don't know who watches my videos, but if you have some other application, interesting application, maybe you could just kind of share it with us.
there are loads of inequalities involving expectations because expectations you know is one fundamental part of this uh, statistical analysis how about if your function is not concave it's not convex and you want an inequality involving expectations well there are loads of others as newbies you're likely to see this Cauchy Schwartz inequality but there are many others okay so today we've met Johan Jensen and seen his inequality